We're getting right to it with the papers this morning. We have joining us to look at the headlines and what's beyond the scrimmers is Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN News. A pleasure to have you and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Good morning, once again. We're kicking off with the Punch newspapers this morning. Let's see what uh, major stories that we can find over there. Uh, the big one you can all, well, you will be seeing on your screen. Yes, there it is. The federal government and National Assembly consider UK-US flights ban next week. Is it too little too late? That's one question we should ask ourselves. Also, transporting containers in Lagos equals shipping costs from China. And that says, uh, that's from a report. Uh, Bishop Cook uh, receives backing. Catholic says Bishop's attackers are agents of evil. And also, National Assembly transmits 13.5 trillion naira budget to Buhari. That's also one of the stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. And of course, still talking about the COVID-19 second wave, lawmakers, ministry hold meetings, considering all options, says the Senate committee chair. And also a fresh ban can hurt the economy, says uh, stakeholders. Lagos goes after fake COVID-19 certificate sellers. It's one of the things we will be talking about extensively on the program this morning. 23 killed as Lagos bound truck crashes in Niger. And also kidnappers threatened marching me to Zamfara, says uh, an Ikiti businessman. Mob sets to ablaze, injures one in Oyo. And assailants kill businessman over ooh, cigarette lighter in Ondo Hotel. Soldiers DSS arrest six planning a protest in Oshun State. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, quickly get into it. Um, Mr. Wandu, you could go ahead. I think we probably could start from uh, the UK-US flights ban uh, that has uh, been considered. Is it maybe too little too late? Um, exactly. As you rightly said, me, it's too, too late. Uh, several countries um, have banned their flights uh, to uh, into and up um, UK. Even the European Union, part of the countries of the European Union, uh, which uh, the United States Kingdom used to be part of, a lot of uh, some of those countries also made them um, flies from UK because we're having a, a rise uh, in COVID-19. Um, so I don't know why it's taking long for Nigeria. To, we're always doing things just to leave, to leave for us to come in out and give, start giving excuses. Um, I don't know the economic value of uh, allowing flights to be in and out of coming in from the United Kingdom for now. Um, so it, it, it's, it's coming to it. And uh, our government said that people should restrict themselves, uh, adhere to social distancing, use face masks. They'll be going around closing the centers, um, booking licenses, but the most important part of uh, the job they've not done. So I still don't see the reason why they are still considering. They were used considering what are they to do? Okay. Um, that should be it. That should be taken um, as quickly as possible. And I don't see the uh, the NCD not, seems to be shying from its responsibilities. Just more, much more interested in not telling Nigeria has to keep right. safe and the rest of you, you could, you could also add don't forget your, that. I'm that. Uh, you could also add to your thoughts uh, concerning the uh, COVID nineteen um, situation. The story on fake COVID nineteen. Yes, um, that arises uh, from what we're hearing. Yes, as I said, in the rest from what we are, uh, it's not just only in across the globe, even in the United States, you see the figures coming, despite the fact that uh, the vaccine uh, is there. Um, it, it, they have the vaccine, but it's still right. And the um, um, U.S. is practically shutting out again. But my concern is, when are we going to get the vaccine in Nigeria? We don't have any. While other countries already have vaccines, uh, whether it's out of Pfizer, although Pfizer might be applicable here uh, because of uh, the kind of temperature uh, that is needed to keep that uh, person. But the other versions of it, uh, we should, by now we should be seeing it, and we are hearing that uh, late January and the rest of them. But the fact that it is rising now, because we are getting from NCDC, uh, it seems that uh, a lot is happening. Don't forget, just a few days ago, the Nigerian Medical Association came out to say that about 20 doctors died of COVID-19 within a week or there about if 20 doctors will die of COVID-19, you can imagine the number of people that have died. And, the, and the, you know, we don't keep that here. 
So people must have been dying that uh, from COVID-19 without people just uh, take it as normal at all. That means right. so many deaths uh, of recent, and they will need to do something as quickly as possible. All right. Uh, Mr. Wandu, quickly share, before we move to the next paper, let's get your thoughts also on the uh, issue uh, from Bishop Kuka and uh, reactions to his uh, statements uh, basically criticizing the uh, current administration in Nigeria um, as it is uh, today. It's only how people did. What is it that uh, uh, Bishop Kuka said, or have said, that not the Serata? Abuba Oma, a few months ago, said something that Nepalian accused of nepotism in his mind and the rest of them. Is it just because of the fact that uh, Bishop Kuka uh, talked about the issue of fuel that it has been? Um, if it has not been somebody from some certain part of the country, or that would have been the possibility of being true or not. Uh, but uh, I think we should be looking at the message, not just the, the messenger. Uh, most of the things that Bishop Kuka is not somebody that he is used to talking for uh, sake of where it is, he says he did it, and that has been the choice. So, what do you accuse him of? Um, uh, suspense and rebel, must be. The fact is that look at what they have said, and if there are areas where we the government need to improve on, they should be they should put on it. Stop attacking him. I don't know. He's a Nigerian. He's entitled to opinion. Every Nigerian right. to the opinion. Um, I and guess we'll still be seeing. Um, to the if you enter the country, say it, not just. To, uh, uh, Mr. Wandu, uh, the uh, network is uh, slightly cutting off your voice, but we will uh, stay with you still. Um, the Cooker's Martyr is captured again, this time on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it says, uh, Cooker's anti-nepotism sermon divides the North. And then we also have Reavers, Cross River Security Outfit arrest 25 kidnappers, armed robbers, and then there is a gunman killed two, abduct 50 in Katsina. And then that very inspiring front page caption, person of the year, are messengers of hope. The NSAS protesters are being celebrated by the Guardian news paper. The chief editor had written a piece there. You might just want to read it up and see why they are. The NSAS protesters are the person of the year for the Guardian newspaper. I certainly will be reading that in detail. Let's start with that uh, editorial from the Guardian newspaper, Mr. Wandu. Uh, do you share the position that the NSAS protesters, you know, I, I just glanced at it now. It talked about how they came together, the community spirit, the way they mobilized and all of that. That's captured in that piece are they for you as well, persons of the year? Well, that's the opinion of the guy, um, and I, I don't regret. For me, the person, the person of the year should be average Nigeria, not just the ancestors protest. The average Nigeria has gone through so much tumult this year, um, economically, politically, socially, and otherwise. Um, and the average Nigeria who cannot put on his table. The average Nigeria has lost its job. The average Nigeria that is struggling not really to make any. The average Nigeria is struggling to distribute of its truth. The average Nigeria well, that's the, 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 the NSAS protesters, uh, Mr. Wandu, yeah. just so, to button, so, the NSAS protesters are Nigerians. They are ordinary Nigerians, young people who came out to say. No, 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 no don't be wrong. As I said, don't get, no, no. No, don't get me wrong. That, that is more of a, a revolution, uh, more like a group of people. I, I, I'm not taking any away from what they did. Uh, I, I said that opinion of Gary, and, and oh, yeah. you're asking for my personal opinion. I said my own personal opinion is that um, there are Nigerians um, that are suffering, are able to endure 2020. 2020 has one of the most difficult years in the history of mankind. And any Nigerian that survived 2020 should be. Uh, a old man here, uh, but I'm not with them. I talk about um, the the ESA um, movement. But my fear, uh, my my fear, that um, it was just like enough. I think that we should have that platform to um, to engage 
on on other is just instead of just seeing it just one of uh, um uh, or or uh, age men just to get this to do that would have done the second next level engaging government on issue of politics um, social affair and the rest of them get them organized that group uh but as it uh, is in the, after the answer to the industry um but it's too good like what about the people all right. Um, well, I apologize uh, for the you know audio quality, um, but of course, uh, still sticking with uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher, CKN News. Hopefully, the network improves. Um, I'm guessing also the Guardian has its own specific reasons why they chose you know um, the NSAS protesters. Uh, just like Time Magazine, sometimes the, the Time Person of the Year. Um, always gets uh, some people, you know, squeezing their faces and wondering why this person. But they always have specific reasons why they choose um, each person. But let's move to the Nation newspapers and see what we can find. Um, it says over there, uh, Kuka's attack on um, Buhari draws more flack and backing. COVID-19, Lagos opens 10 oxygen centers. 23 die in Lagos-bound truck accident. And... Um, also this morning on the Nation, Arawa Youths uh, Coalition, uh, Lash Clerk, Southern and Middle Belt leaders, uh, bishops, give support. That, that's still referring to Bishop Kuka now. A 2021, bill, a 2021 appropriation bill sent for assent. And also, IMF raises nine, uh, rates Nigeria's GDP top in Africa. One story here I think we should also talk about. Lagos to battle La Papa gridlock with special squad. And how my husband and I ship young girls to Italy for prostitution. These are the big ones that you can find here. Death penalty for kidnapping in Plateau State. And also abducted a kitty businessman rescued. All right, Chris Wando, let's start with the Apapa gridlock and the plans of the Lagos State government to bring in its own squad uh, to handle... Uh, the affairs over there. Um, how do you think this might work and do you think this really is the answer to the challenges at APAPA? Well, the APAPA has been looking a big issue for years, uh, which is uh, economic thoughts. In fact, um, I feel that I live in that area. I, I will never free, I will not around that area. Even if I have free rent, I will not live there because of the problem Associated with that. and further government uh, for that to uh, set a task force uh, to look into that make sure that things come to normal. By the end of it, what we find that a legion of uh, corruption and the of them was never like this task force, and it was disbanded. For me, um, I think the best thing, if I have my way, best thing is to close down that uh, that, uh, that part for two weeks, close it down totally, and make sure that we'll be able to clear. Uh, green up there, then you can see this for working But With its own trailer, park, if you go there from above up to it will go to, to the lab using papers, like kind of preventing back from moving, moving. So, and that to me, so the governor was there today, and he's going to set up a task. And the same task is going to be made up, to be made up last month official and one or two other agencies. That we might not be this long. Um, uh, to me, as he said, that whatever it's going to cost, let them show, show them that support for at least a week. Total movement be clo was closed, and then we can go off, uh, moving vehicles first and then um, try to. And there's something was said yesterday. Um, the problem also is uh, with the port authorities, where you take about 10 hours to process the paper of one truck to move things at the port. That in this is a big problem. So I don't know whether I are not engaging a, a user of technology to be able to drive um, um, to drive um, activities at port. Why do why do a truck wait for ten hours just for the paper to move around there within the air, within the before you can be able to give approval? That right. in this staying, sense doesn't make sense. Staying with transportation, I, I want to draw your attention to the twenty-three die in Lagos bound truck accident. There seem to be. Um, oh, it's just me. A lot of truck accidents around Lagos. They, they, you see them in the middle of the road. They will stay in the middle of the road to be fixing the vehicle with no caution signs on either side. And you 
this is not one, this is not once, this is not twice. Around Lagos, I mean, what is going on? I thought there was a restriction as to the times that trucks carrying goods can ply our roads. Are, are you aware of that? Yes, uh, I am Godzor of the British Special Matter of the Federal Receipt and I have a fair idea of what is happening. But let us look at particular, this particular event and put it into context. 23 people died and several hours. Uh, I don't know in sin, and I'm so worried. I don't know why allowing that. If you are very familiar with movements of um, some of these, especially our brother from the north, the way they climb themselves up of um, trailers feed with cows, I get so scared. I see, and this is how they arrive from the north to Lake uh, to south. And I believe that this is a thing waiting to have. If anything happens, and uh, you see the way they have themselves on the cows will be big, uh, inside or then they will put themselves up on top and just so hundreds of them. And then uh, that was what happened uh, with that vehicle coming from uh, coming from the north um, to Lagos, and it, uh, that hasn't happened, and um, 23 and died on the spot. Um, I thought we, enforcement, a problem to me is enforcement. Uh, I don't think that we're enforcing now. Probably the FRS, the, the police, and all those um, sad responsibility of enforcing some of these things. We, I think we, we, we are realizing and giving people so much left to behave anyhow they like, and that is why we have some of this issue. Yeah. Um, one we just stated, we have just seen people park with us caution. You see people driving with the like and the rest of them. But that also goes to each manpower. What is the power of uh, FRS? How many men do they have a country releasing at 200 million people? That is also a problem. And the top one which people don't want to agree with me, always say, is that because of the fact that they are not carrying arms, I'm not saying they should give them eight or seven to be shooting and stuff. But the fact is, that because they are not bare hands, most of these will pay them. What can a man who went just raise his hand and say stop and you stop? There's nothing else he can do. Some of them have been killed. Some of them have been known. And then before a truck, you get killed. Some of them just toss up things and stop. And so that in this is a challenge. All right. Um, I, I want you to also. I okay. The network is always a problem, but we will. Um plow on. Um, I want you to talk on the IMF rates Nigeria's GDP top in Africa, and it's the 26th globally. I mean, we're talking about our economy and the challenge that we're having, and we're getting this news. Is it cherry for you? Is it a positive for you? Is it something to be celebrated? Nothing to celebrate for and that impacts on the life Nigerians. Uh, they can read whatever they want to read. They should go to the market and say a of rice um, or a bag rice or that of gay or plant or base or water. Um, price of goods and cities are rotating. Nigerians are feeding difficult to. So when I see all the girls to find it, I make a progress and it makes me laugh. That is to me, that is story. Or is what has translated to life and life. The, the network is <laughs> the network is really, really bad. Um, um Mr. Chris Wandu, let me just um add more headlines. Hopefully, by the time you start speaking again, it will be a bit clearer. Uh, the Business Day has acute FX scarcity. Empty consumer wallet hurt manufacturers in 2020. Uh, that's the Business Day newspaper. We also have Nigerian stocks rally way to best performers globally in 2020. I'll take that again. I read that a bit awkwardly. Uh, Nigerian stocks rally way to best performers globally in 2020. And inside the paper, there is the story about 80% financial inclusion in national targets Nigeria failed to meet in 2020. 80% financial inclusion and national targets Nigeria failed to meet in 2020. Uh, there is a, a scene there, uh, Babajide Sonwulu um, interrogating a truck driver. I guess that would be during a government's inspection and assessment of the Apapa gridlock. We do have a situation there. 
Uh, yes. Um, so let's get back to what you were saying, um, the nation newspaper. If you could just complete your thoughts there and then we'll move to a business day. I just wanted to see if by the time you speak, the network will be better. Yeah, I hope it's better. Um, I'm sorry to have a holistic look at the law emission the federal road to give them more power able to uh, do their job. I uh, also believe that uh, the road safety authorities uh, giving them a key for which they are allowed to um, uh, carry on uh, because that is this uh, deterrent to some people. Let's get to see where the issue number of officers are on the daily basis. Uh, officers obviously are killed by truck drivers, uh, vehicle drivers, and car drivers, and rest of them because they know that they don't get any harm. Uh, when you see so the, for them to be able to enforce effectively, we should be able to give them a level of power. And I know that there's a lot of establishing safety to the large extent uh, give them that power. So, but we also have to look at the area of manpower as a militia. How many road safety officers we have on the road? Uh, how many have been recruited? Uh, that in this uh, area we should look And then um, the issue of, um, of truck, uh, bad trucks moving in the night. Others believe that trucks should be banned moving in the day. They should move at night. I don't know what you know. Uh, more than that. What's up, All right, I guess I we'll have to uh, pause here. To Mr. Me. Wandu. Is, is look at Ancast and the rest of Mr. Wandu. Um, I must say thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. It's unfortunate the network hasn't been so nice, but we're able to make out some of the things uh, that you said. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good, good morning day. to you. Uh, apologies for the poor... Uh, uh, network issues there. It was pretty difficult getting every uh, everything bit of what he, he was said. Saying. Yes, but well, I mean, we could piece it together and yes. um, have an idea where he is um, going. So I, I will quickly just you know ask, and this is with regards to the uh, Papa Port uh, story, because I read an article that was written, you know, an investigative report I believe was done uh, about seven days ago, or it was put out about seven days ago, um, and the details are very shocking. And so my question really is. How come everybody knows about this level of corruption by the federal tax force, but the leadership doesn't? How do we all know? How do drivers know? How do regular people on the streets know? How do the people who have the trailers, the people who have the goods, who have to pay a million naira sometimes to get one container in or, or rather out of the, of the you know, ports, but the leadership doesn't know. I mean, I, mean, don't... I wouldn't. I, I, don't, I wouldn't agree that they don't know per se. Oh. Maybe again, the conversation around a willingness to take action. Maybe there is um, a hesitation to take action that we should be questioning, not for a lack of knowledge. I, I, I really doubt that there are things that happen that people in authority are clueless, completely clueless about. Um, it's it's pretty. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> There's no way they don't know. They definitely know, but... Okay, clue I me mean, in next time when you're being sarcastic, <laughs> so I don't go to... Okay. I'm really just... I'm, I'm in shock as to how a person... And I'm, I'm sure that if you ask whoever it is that is in charge of the task force at the port, he's going to say, oh, you know, these are, you know, wild claims. They will be investigated and any airing officers would be, you know, fired, blah, 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 blah. And so when people then say that the corruption climbs all the way up, um, you can't argue with that. Well, uh, it's a conversation that continues. Um, we don't Absolutely. know where it's going to end until there is a will from leadership to actually tackle the challenge. We're going to break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about what happened today in history. Stay with us.